Tom Terrell, all okay. This is Timothy Campbell, and we're going to be uh, following up our last presentation on our tutorial embedding electronics using the MSP for the TI Launchpad. Uh, for those of you who don't remember our last presentation, the Launchpad is a small uh, embedded hardware development system. It's sort of like an, an um, Arduino, except it's based off of a different processor. The MSP430 processor has several advantages, mainly uh, the main one being that it's very power efficient and allows for the development of devices that can run off the batteries for a much longer time than possible using hardware. This is uh, able to be done because the um, MSP430 can go into, into and out of sleep modes much more efficiently than most other microprocessors. Okay, so what's new since last time? Um, we have a new and improved LED tile, which we showed last time. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, I have a couple documents that are up in our repo for basic circuits. It covers kind of Ohm's Law, basic circuit analysis, RC circuits. Um, we're using Paul Falstead's analog circuit simulator. I don't know if anyone has seen that. It's surprisingly handy and quite in-depth, except until it gets to electronics or somewhat. And so, the next step in that part of our project is adding how to use electronics, how to use diodes, transistors, and covering impedance, a little bit of mathematical theory for that. Um, we have some code for some standard devices. Uh, we have it working on that computer. It doesn't work on this because it hasn't seen it before, but um, we can get joysticks working. We can get analog input, interact with computers with it. Also, got code working for ultrasonic range detectors. It's a lot different from the Arduino code. The Arduino just kind of uses all software, and our version of it basically just interacts with hardware to make it work. Um, I have a hardware UART. It was it's four times faster than the software UART I presented last time, and this is, uses the onboard chip that's dedicated to serial communication for the NSP430, so Everything's offloaded to it, and it doesn't need any CPU intervention. So, where are we going to go from here? Um, we are going to try and standardize our libraries. There's a little caveat to that at the end of the tutorial. Um, there's a lot of interesting ways to interact with a computer. I know you, you buy like a five dollar microcontroller, and you still want to use a seventeen hundred dollar computer to talk to it, but. Um, to try and we want I want to try and get the communication to be kind of as robust as possible so you can actually do a lot of things in sort of a standard way like you would with a normal program. Um, get better printing capabilities, have more functions to have the MSP430 tell the computer how it's doing, what it's doing, what kind of data it has to offer. Um, standardized ADC functions, the light board that we presented last time has pretty good capabilities when it comes to working with analog digital conversion, taking real world values and turning them into digital things. Um, I want to stress a modular structure in the code that we write. A lot of code for the MSP430 has to do with its interrupt routines. And so um, you kind of just have blocks of code. It might look a little scattered at first until you get used to programming it. So we want to make transition to programming with inner routines as easy as possible. And then timer routines kind of create functions to set up well, what do you want to do? Are you using PWM to control lights? Do you need something to happen periodically? Sort of create templates to fit that sort of structure. And then I want to focus um, certain tutorials on conceptual materials. <laughs> there are a lot of reference materials, so I want to keep the theory as concise and clear as possible, and then if you don't get the concepts, you can move on to some formal textbook or some other free resource. So um, last time I presented a small um, LED board. This had 81 LEDs on it, 81 RGB LEDs, and was around um, 10 watts. So based off of um, feedback I received from that board, it seemed like it would be a good idea to produce a larger scale more refined version of a um, similar circuit. So this um, new version, known as the um, Programmable Intelligent 
LED development system um, is based off of um, the MSP430. However, it uses an MSP430 that you can't get on the launch pad. It has slightly more I.O. pins, but otherwise it's completely compatible with the code. So this allows more devices to connect to it. You can add more sensors, more interface things. And uh, motivation for making a standalone board is that RGB LEDs and the controllers you need to run a large array of them are great, but off-the-shelf things cost quite a bit. And a fully functional development board, but with features that are optimized for driving a large array of LEDs would be very handy to have. And it's supposed to be inexpensive but fun, and designed such that someone could solder it together and it would have a pre-programmed chip on it, and it would just work as soon as it's soldered together. It wouldn't need to be programmed, but it has the interfaces available so you can program it or control it from your computer. And it also has both 3.3 volt and 5 volt 1 amp logic rails. So you can control, um, they add various sensors that run at either logic level. And all the um, I.O. for onboard devices, which I'll cover in a moment, are able to be disabled with shorting blocks, which allows you to um, basically say, oh, well, I don't need this feature that's on the board. I'll add some other feature instead, but I won't leave it tying up the I.O. lines on repurpose it or something else. And you can do that without soldering or desoldering it. So uh, this is known as the uh, pile board at the moment. It's a name that may be changed, but probably won't. And I really wanted to do a demonstration of it today. However, I put together several new arrays of various sizes. I was running this off of a one amp supply last night. A large array requires slightly more than one amp. For one reason or another, the supply died and most likely damaged the board in the process. I haven't had time to troubleshoot it, however this was running for several days nearly non-stop prior to that. This is the um, board here, and it has three analog um, linear slide potentiometers on it. This is designed for um, the RGB mixer mode as well as other modes you can use them for whatever in the code, but there's three of them so that you can create an RGB mixer and have a handy interface for that. It has a microphone, an audio amplifier, and hardware envelope filter on it, so you can have sound activated um, light changing. And two push buttons, as well as uh, high current MOSFETs for driving the LED array. And it's based off of the um, MSP430-2553, which is the highest end value line microprocessor that you can get in the launch pad. However, they make it in two different packages. The one that um, this uses has an extra eight pins from the largest one that you can put on the launch pad. And it um, runs in 24-bit color. However, I'll, I'll cover that in a bit. It's actually doing the PWM at 12 bits per color, even though there's only eight bits worth of discrete values of color. And it has a hardware URL, which you could do serial, SPR, or I squared C, and um, interface multiple of these boards together so you can have synchronized panels or control them from the computer or have a larger array. Um, so LEDs behave in a more or less linear matter, manner when you um, change the duty cycle of PWM signal driving. Our eyes don't. So if you were to drive an LED with an 8-bit PWM, you can go from 0% on to 100% on in a linear manner. In 200. 56 discrete steps. Uh, however, our eyes will see um, very large steps when it's dim and very small steps when it's bright because of this um, curve where um, it allows, it's because our vision allows us to see better at night, basically. So it gives us more dynamic range by condensing levels this way. So you can uh, account for this in several uh, matters, and there are various color spaces such as sRGB that accounts for this and also accounts for the differences between uh, the eye sensitivity for different colors. For the purpose of a board like this, it's important to compensate for the non-linearity of it, but the differences in colors is not large enough to have that. So you can approximate it with a quadratic function where it takes an 8-bit input and outputs a 12-bit color. So it's a 12-bit PWM output, but you can never use all 12 bits of data. It goes in nonlinear steps. You end up with a lot more steps towards 0% and only a few steps towards 100%. And 
and uh, this gets to uh, what I'm going to be doing in the future. I'm going to be launching a Kickstarter for creating a uh, new version of these boards where the uh, rewards will be basically uh, kits to assemble these. Um, the kits will require soldering, but all the surface mount parts will be taken care of already. And there are three different sizes of panel. Um, this is the, si the same panel you saw last time. It has 81 RGB LEDs in it. This um, larger panel, the um, Epic LED panel kit, has um, 225 LED RGB LEDs. And it's actually bright enough to be used as a desk lamp or something along those lines. Or if you have it um, in RGB mode or as a strobe or something. It can be quite annoying if you're at a large room. And then this is the um, smallest one, which is uh, only nine LEDs, but it's enough that you can use it as a nightlight or something like that and just have a fairly bright, small, RGB controllable light source. And the projected costs for these are um, 20, 30, and 40 dollars respectively for different sizes. And um, the reason I'm doing a Kickstarter is there's a global reach to people, um, many of whom are interested in open source hardware and software. And this is an open source hardware and software project. Um, the Kickstarter campaign will be launched later this summer. It's pending various um, business things first. <laughs> but I'm hoping to get it launched within the next month. And kits would include um, everything you, you see here, basically. Um, diffuser panels, and will most likely be multiple diffuser panels for a kit. LED tape, which is self-adhesive and doesn't have to be configured this way, but can be, and will provide um, standoffs, the diffuser and backing material, as well as the board, all the components you need for it, and wire hook it up. The only thing that wouldn't be included um, with these very basic kits would be a um, power supply. It requires a 12 volt supply at um, one amp for this panel. This one can be run off of around a quarter of an amp. And this one needs over two amps, like two and a quarter amps. So, yeah. Hey, uh, there was quite a recent development in the past couple of months, and just recently, I think it was just on half a day last night. I only found out about this at 4.30 um, this morning. Um, yeah, if the launch pad wasn't a huge contender in the hobbyist market, it really is now because there's a port of the Arduino IE called Energia, and it is basically just a port of the Arduino IE. They're kind of putting the finishing touches on translating all the Arduino functions to function for the MSP430. Now, what this really does is it makes the launchpad very much more user friendly because, in addition to Code Composer Studio, which we've been using to write all the code for this, you have a fully open source and very well known and documented, i.e. So now the launch pad really is not a whole lot of difference between it and the Arduino, where it, where people like are coming into this as a beginner. Now the only drawback is it's still an abstraction layer. The thing that I've always had a problem with Arduino is it kind of takes away the power of the hardware in some instances. Like it still is, um, a lot easier to program sleep modes and interrupt programming with Launchpad, but this makes it a whole lot easier to, for a beginner especially, to work with these because you basically have something that is heavily documented, heavily used, you can find any project you want. There's still some differences between the chips, but the fact that there is a port of the Arduino IDE is and I believe that is it. So, usual suspects, Professor Morphy, Sean Sullivan, everyone for listening to us later on. Any questions, comments? Yes. So, I don't remember the board because I wasn't here. Uh, there wasn't a board last time. Last time it was... Uh, that's okay, that's not my question. Oh, the LED board. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Are, are all of the LEDs individually addressable? They are. They all, they are, they all turn on at the same time? They all turn on the same time. Okay. It's designed more or less as a like a light fixture, like the kind yeah. of thing you would use on a stage. Or like in the uh, library? Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, where did you get the LED tape? Uh, China. China, got it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's actually quite affordable. And yeah. Well, because like, it's really hard to find LEDs cheaply that aren't from China. 
Right. So I just want to the Kickstarter yeah. thing would allow to make the price even lower for people and have relatively fast shipping to see the order in such large quantities. Then. Cool. So I'm going to be working on a Kickstarter thing, and hopefully by the time we do our next presentation, I'll be able to say that it's up. Go to the URL, check it out, let your friends yeah. know. Just put a video yeah. on. Yeah. People yeah. will love it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Have a functional demo. There was a yeah. functional demo as of 3 a.m. Yeah. Between 3 a.m. and this morning, it um, ended up killing the power supply, and I didn't have time to basically troubleshoot it and put the power supply. Yeah. However, it does everything the last demonstration did, except in a much more refined manner and with a sound sensor. I was using a power supply for one of those. USB hard drive adapter cables. So it was a 1 amp 12 volt switch mode supply. However, it probably wasn't a very high quality supply to begin with. And I was pulling a little over 2 amps from it. So it lasted for two days or so. We would probably have a recommended supply. Yeah, and there's going to be supplies available. Basic kits won't include them, but I'd be looking at getting supplies for maybe $5 or more. And this board also doesn't have a USB on it, however that's something that the final version will have. And will be both so you can control it from software on the computer and program it. So. Yeah, or make just another open source package so you can play music and have it flash colors. Yeah, well that's already... Oh, I know, that's the sound thing, but yeah. you, I mean, maybe somebody else can make that for a project or something. Something that actually just takes, you know, like a stream or something. It makes oh, it a little bit better than the computer and software. Yeah, yeah. that would be much better. Right now, it more or less detects. It detects level, but it's not that sensitive. Yeah. If you have um, some music playing moderately loud with a like, easily distinguishable beat, it'll synchronize to the beat and change No, I just think that's something but, cool. Maybe somebody else will do that, yeah. you know, if you have this USB thing. Right, yeah, and it'll be designed so you can easily control from any software. That'd be pretty cool. Any other questions? Thanks.